two by two inch square portion. Uh, to get through the PhD in the history of art, they sit you in a room and they flash 250 images at you and they only give you a two by two inch square portion of any work of art. So they give you the Mona Lisa, but they only give you her eye. Did you know she has no eyebrows? No eyebrows. <laughs> they'll give you a pottery shard. They'll give you a Monet haystack. They'll give you whatever they might give you. So what they do is they train you to develop a photographic memory. So all I get is this, that little point. And I have to be able to identify it by the brushwork and say, okay, this is an American piece and it's made in this time period, it's made with this kind of pigment and this hand. So when you bring me the back with stretcher bars and a mitered corner on these stretcher bars, it's like party time for me. I don't just get a little bit. I get the whole thing. I get to look at the structure. I get to look at the color of the canvas. The darker the canvas, the older the canvas. I get to look at American stretcher bars. That means this piece is actually stretched in the United States and probably painted by an artist in the United States. I get to show you the measurement in between each of these nails, which tells you where was the art school where this artist was trained. Amazing stuff. Stuff that you would go, how does she know that? Because I look at all these objects. This is all I do. I'm not married. I don't have kids. I don't have pets. I don't bake. I have no hobbies. This is it. <laughs> this is what I do. <laughs> this particular piece is worth about $7,500. It dates to about 1920 to 1940. The frame is another 350 bucks. Where do you keep it? Into the mic, honey. She didn't like it. She, she didn't had, like it. She had it in the basement, and I said, Mom, I love that painting. I love she that said, painting. She said, take it. Go take it. So I have it hanging in my bedroom. Hang it in the bedroom. Basically, what you want to make sure that you do is keep it out of direct sunlight. No pledge, no end dust. If the cleaning lady comes over, she doesn't dust it. I know it's you, it's me too. <laughs> but I, there's all of a sudden I'm talking to I don't clean. Okay, well I clean. <laughs> so that's what you're looking at. Did your mother smoke? Well, there's some smoke residue to it. The, the woman who had left it to her, yes, was a smoker. The person who left it to her was a smoker. been at least 35 years ago. Okay, so that's what I see on it. And I haven't seen you or met her or knew that woman or anything. And that's Antiques Don't Lie. Antiques will tell you if you know what questions to ask. It's a beautiful piece. Thank you. Very nice. I'm not quite sure. I can't read who the artist was. Why does that matter? Why does that matter? You're all artists happy. You go, what do you mean an artist happy, Lori? What are you talking about? Don't I have to know who the artist is? Well, yeah, but you know what? I look first, before I start talking about artists, I first look at how good the work is. What do I mean by how good the work is? Well, I look at things like, is it convincing to you that if you were an ant this big, and you were placed here next to this horse, that you can move back in space. That you actually can move from this place in the foreground to that place in the background. Is it? Because really what we have is we have a two-dimensional flat pane. We're trying to make it look three-dimensional. Right? So how did you acquire this? It was my father's and my Okay. The other thing I want you to look for are lines or linearity because you're, the artist is trying to get you to move around this composition. For example, when you see horizontal bands, horizontal lines like this one, they want your eye to rest, like a horizon line where your eye will rest. When you see a line that's going straight up and down, they want your eye to frame something. When you see a diagonal line, that diagonal, like if you'll notice, all of these rooftops are on a diagonal. See that? Right here? One big diagonal line. They're trying to move you up and down those rooftops visually. And people say, I didn't know they were doing all this. Pretty well trained artist, American folk art. The frame is not so great. You know, the frame is like my thighs. Not so great. You know? The value on this piece is going to be about $750. Based on who the artist is, the composition of the painting, how good the painting is. The painting is acrylic, it's not oil. Here's the other problem that you have. On this particular painting, someone said, oh, I want to make sure it's protected with cardboard. Cardboard's acidic and it will damage your artwork. Get rid of the cardboard. I don't care what you collect. I don't want to hear about, oh, all my collectibles are in the basement in a cardboard box. In the attic in a cardboard box. Cardboard will damage your works. It'll damage your works of art. You'll never get them back. So, remove this. 
leave it alone, and allow the canvas actually to breathe. Okay? Nice. Acquire the Silva painting from the great artist colony of Carmel, California. My daughter knows. Okay. Your daughter knows. <laughs> You're too darn cute. I should just come over there and kiss you. <laughs> All right. Family, family. Family. Gave it to you. Because they figured that you wouldn't need cholesterol drugs and you'd outlive everybody. What's yeah. your first name? Yeah. Amy. Hey, Amy. The artist is William P. Silva. He is actually. I know, I just said that. My father's great uncle on his mother's side. Oh, God. So. <laughs> Last night I'm hearing someone says, I got that from my mother in law's, yeah. my mother in law's uncle's fourth wife. And I'm going, really? How do we even keep these people straight? There's one of you guys. You're married? You've been married once? You know, you're 30, you know, once. Right, okay. Who was this again? It's, it's my, it would have been my dad's great uncle is the painter. The value on the piece is $25,000. Oh, thank you. Okay, so now all those people and what the provenance is, I don't even care. Here's what you have. You have a silver painting, and they typically will sell anywhere between, well, they have sold between about twenty dollars and $25,000. It is an American Impressionist California landscape. Do we see them in Fort Wayne every day? No. Did we see one today? Yes. Why did we see it? Because they're in the family. All right? So, do you have a bigger one? Tell me you have a bigger one. Yes. Good. But this one is a typical quintessential Carmel, California art colony painting. And they're looking for them all over. You know who collects these? Clint Eastwood. Remember, he was the mayor of Carmel, right? So now we're talking about, look what walked in. Little tiny, unassuming painting, right? It is on board. Oh, I thought it had to be on canvas. No, actually on board as well. Artists would actually paint in plain air, outdoors, directly from nature, directly looking at this scene, and then they would paint it, and then this one would be on board on their easel, they take this one back to their studio, and they'd make it bigger on a piece of canvas in their studio, painting from memory. This is the direct piece, directly from nature, and this particular piece is oftentimes worth even more than some of the other ones. Did you acquire this? Really? You bought this with your own money? Yes. You bought this with your own money? Yes, I did. You liked it? Yes. How much do you like it? On a scale of 1 to 10, do you love it at 10? I'm paying for 20. Okay, did you hear that? She's not going to answer the do I love it. She's going to go right to I got a bargain. Right? She's smart. She's smart. So you figure out a bargain. Because it's a real oil painting. Yes. Okay. It's by an artist who is in training. Okay? You know, when a baby's in training, toilet training. Yeah, you're getting there every once in a while, but most of the time you still need some more work. That's what this needs. So I'm glad you didn't spend more than $20 on it. Where is the painting painted and what do you know about the artist? LMD. No clue, that's why I brought it to you, Dr. Lord. Come on. Right? So, LMD. This particular piece is an artist and there's a couple of things that you can look for to uh, try to identify who's who. First of all, lots of smoking around this painting. Now, you got it at a store, so you don't know who had it before you, but lots of smoking at this particular painting. This particular piece is dirty. If you cleaned it, right, it would be worth a little bit more, and it would look a little bit better, but for the most part, it's probably not worth you investing in the cleaning cost, okay? On the back, these are, of course, mitered corners. This particular stretcher is handmade. So it's probably a Sunday painter, someone who didn't go to school for art but liked art enough. You'll notice too that it is an inconsistent in between, inconsistent measurement in between each nail, right? They're usually consistent in the art schools. They're an inch in between each one. They're half an inch in between each nail. This one is just nailed in anyway, willy nilly. Value on this piece, about the $20 that you paid. It's American, it's made anytime between 1925 and 1940. Thank you. He got this particular piece when he befriended a elderly Canadian woman and she said that, well, you know, before we got, before he was my ex, he had befriended other women. <laughs> we'll leave it at that, right? So this particular friendship <laughs> resulted in this piece going to your son, his son. And it is by an artist named um, 
Morel Bouchard, a relatively well-known late 1900s or late 20th century uh, painter in France. Um, you'll see these pieces sell anywhere between $1,200 and $1,500. Yours is worth about $1,200. It is an oil on board. And this is one of the things that a lot of you folks don't realize. It's called canvas panel or illustration board. It's a piece of canvas and then that's wrapped over a piece of actual illustration board. Right? So it's called illustration board or canvas panel because it really has a backboard that is just masonite or cardboard. And then they put the canvas. They don't stretch the canvas around stretcher bars. It's kind of the quick and dirty way to get yourself a canvas so you can paint with oil on top of it. Your piece is worth about $1,200, pardon me, and it is a piece which is signed, which is good, um, a piece which is in relatively good condition, and we typically see them in places like Canada, right, French Quebec, for example, and other areas. He's best known for these pictures sort of of urban life, is what you've got. <laughs> Why am I egg? Why am I not impressed? That was given to my parents by Brad Shoemaker Christmas Christmas card. It was nice of him. All the boxing is what I'm not impressed by. The mold on the piece, which happens over time. Boxing looks like little dots, right? And boxing actually is where the paper starts to deteriorate over time. Sometimes it relates to, of course, um, a change in temperature and humidity, where dirt and such starts to get involved in there. Value on the piece in my hands is going to be about $200. So you bought this one with that one? Uh, different town. <clears throat> different town. Okay, let's talk a little bit about Brad's. So this is on board. This is a piece of oil. This is oil paint on board. Move you. And then this particular piece is attached with what are framer points. These framers points are contemporary. They're rather new. They're probably from between 1990 and yesterday. Yeah. Okay? Now, that indicates to me that this particular piece was put into this new frame. So the frame is worth about, I don't know, 60 bucks. The painting, however, is in fact worth a little bit more. So this is the General Wolf Inn on the back of this. A stepping stone for Annie Lennox and the Eurythmics. All right, so that's what you've got. You've got a 1992 uh, European-based piece, a piece that probably is valued somewhere around $250 because it's a famous place. But it's a contemporary work. It's realistic in its style, so it looks like the actual work, the actual place, right? Now, if you were to sell it here, is it worth more here, or is it worth more next to a cassette tape or a CD of the Eurythmics? You see where I'm going with this? I want you to unite objects in order to get top dollar. This piece isn't worth all that much just as a painting, right? But it is, in fact, worth more if you can connect it to the very famous person. It's called celebrity promotion, right? You know, it's why you know, certain celebrities will bring a little bit more interest to a piece. It's a nice painting, though. Pretty well handled, too. Thank you. She died when she was 100 in 2015. God, she died at 100. Imagine what 100 has seen. She's near 100. I mean, you know, I'm 26, and I think I've seen a lot. <laughs> right? Right? OK, it's not that funny, though, you know. I have to say. Anyway. OK, so you've got this, and she died at 100, and she would travel. So this is a Spanish colonial piece. It's made later 1800s, early 1900s. But it's in the Spanish colonial style, and it says here, of course, Our Lady of Lourdes at the bottom. So in Spanish. Um, this particular piece is painted onto a piece of metal. You hear it? I want you to everybody in the video to hear it, too. And you're seeing, of course, these particular figures. You're seeing, of course, Our Lady. Mary is always shown in blue. Mary is always shown in a blue, or Virgin Mary is always shown in a blue mantle, going all the way back to the Renaissance, and even farther back than that. And the reason why she's always in blue is that blue was actually, in the history of art, used to, used to um, only show people of great reverence, like the Virgin Mary, because it's made with a combination of lapis lazuli, that stone would be crushed down, and then mixed with egg or tempera paint, and then basically, blue would be, because lapis lazuli was so expensive, you would use blue. So as time goes on, even if you're not using lapis lazuli in your paints, they would continue to use blue as a sign of reverence or honor. 
And that's what you're seeing here. Spanish colonial pieces like this were very typical, and they were typical in retablos. They were also typical with santos, figures of, of course, um, saints would be placed onto a personal altar, or they would be placed, pieces like this would be placed in a home altar, or on a wall just like a crucifix might. This is oil paint on, of course, tin, on a base metal, a tin type metal. Um, and base metal is just a term for inexpensive metal. And then you're seeing, of course, the roses. Certain flowers have symbolism as well. So for example, Mary is oftentimes seen in a closed garden, an enclosed gate, which is reference to her virginity, have a closed gate. Oftentimes she is also seen with roses, that idea of having, of course, that heroic flower of the queen of heaven to in fact be among her. You'll notice she's wearing a rosary bead. You're seeing the rosary beads are very important as well. And you're seeing this figure who was also carrying the rosary beads. Shown in the landscape as John in his gospel described her, described her amongst, of course, a, amongst, of course, a um, rocky landscape, sometimes shown on a hill or with rocks around her as well. That idea, of course, referencing the womb and Jesus Christ in the womb. Value on this piece, about $750. It dates to about the latter part of the 1850s until about 1875. It's really quite nice. I have seen some of them, not as good as yours, but some of them most likely in areas around the Gulf of Mexico. I see them, of course, in places like Louisiana. I see them in parts of Florida, and I see them mostly in Texas. Very nice. Thank you.